please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. So those were the top headlines and we are talking about the markets in particular and mid cap index that's not looking good and as far as the advanced decline ratio is concerned that's also going in favor of the declines at the moment in fact ICICI Bank is one of the biggest draggers on Nifty 50 today while the low corporate uh, loan book uh, kind of companies banks which are HDFC Bank as well as Kotak Mahindra Bank are the high flyers and contributing the most HCL Tech after the numbers have been also dragging the overall markets. Manglam, hi. Absolutely. Hi, Nisha. You know, the Nifty, uh, on, on a, uh, if you take, just take a look at it on an optical basis, just a band of about 50 points up or down, 30 points off low, 30 points off high. But the Nifty Bank, the contribution chart of the Nifty Bank should come up for you. 24 points on the Nifty given by Kotak Mahindra Bank, but Nifty Bank out there, 210 points given by Kotak Mahindra, 127 given by HDFC Bank. So uh, it is the private sector banks which are doing the heavy list lifting today. But in the mid-cap space as well, it's all about individual stocks. On the one hand, you have uh, something like a Marico results are expected. That stock has moved to the high point of the day. And on the other, you have PC Jewelers, which has collected about 35 36% from the high point of today's trading session. But auto sales, they've come in robust for the month of April for most of auto majors. Sonia is here with all the details. Over to you, Sonia. Well, auto sales for the industry were pretty good in the month of April, but the aberration this time around was Ashok Leyland. The numbers are not only below street estimates, they are much below what the company has done over the last many months. This time, Ashok Leyland sold just 12,677 units versus uh, an average of around 19 to 22,000 over the last many months. Now, we don't know the reason for it. It could be capacity constraints, it could be, uh, you know, seasonality, etc. But these numbers are the lowest since July 2017, and that's the reason the stock is under pressure. This despite the industry doing quite well this month. Talking about the industry, very good numbers coming in from Maruti and Tata Motors. Those were the stars this month. Record high sales for Maruti. Tata Motors saw the MHCV sales rise 370%, which is the medium and heavy commercial vehicles. The others were also pretty good. So Aisha Motors, m and reported good sales. Royal Enfield was up 27%. m and tractor sales grew about 18%. For TVS Motor, it was slightly below what the street was estimating, hence there's profit taking on the stock but this 24 percent is uh, growth that tvs posted is not something to complain about bajaj auto saw its uh, highest sales since september 2017 the trend was very good because export sales have picked up you also saw three wheeler sales improve and the management has been quite confident as well the domestic uh, two wheelers uh, is a very clear uh, uh, position the the uh, this quarter we are playing out on three strong uh, areas um, products, communications, and also uh, strong dealer management. If all the three uh, work out very well, um, I think uh, two lakh plus uh, on an average per uh, a month for the current quarter is uh, certainly visible. All right, that's as far as the auto sales is concerned. But HCL Tech, that one reported an inline set of numbers, but FY19 guidance, that one's a big disappointment which is why the stock is under pressure in today's trading session. Remember, the dollar revenue came in at $20, $38 million worth, and rupee uh, revenue coming in at close to around 13,180 crores. Earlier, we spoke with Mr. C. Vijay Kumar. Uh, uh, with uh, rupee revenue coming in at close to, or rather, we spoke with Mr. Uh, C. Vijay Kumar and Anil Chanana, the CFO of the company, to get a better sense of their guidance. Listen in. At this point, I would think half of it would be organic half of it. and half of it could be inorganic. Could be inorganic. Uh, we have already announced some mm -hmm. acquisitions. Uh, yeah. They are already included in this uh, guidance. All of that is factored in into our 9.5 to hmm. 11.5, which is Correct. still uh, huh. very industry leading, top end of the growth. It is, uh, yeah. And good organic growth as well. So hmm. I feel pretty good. All right. Consolidating on the frontline index, but individual stocks, they're buzzing. It's consumption, consumption. Pull up the FMCG index. That one's at the high point of the day. We've spoken about a couple of these mid-caps, or rather non-index large caps, which are reporting numbers. But ITC, that one's the big boy in the FMCG index. That one, too, has moved to the high point of the day, sitting with a gain of close to around 2%. So we'll keep an eye out on all these individual stocks. But uh, yet another twist in the long list of twists and turns 
in the race for Fortis Healthcare. Malaysia's IHH sweetened its offer to acquire the company and Munjal's Bermans, they too have revised their offer. Nisha, it, it just continues. Oh yes, the May 1st deadline, Manglam, was a very hectic day for the bidders of uh, Fortis Healthcare and now it is going to be a tough task, not just for the independent advisory committee but also the board of Fortis Healthcare when they meet on May 10th. So what really happened yesterday is that IHH, the Malaysian company, as well as Munjal's and Burman's have really upped their offer. Munjal Burman have increased their upfront amount to 1,050 crore rupees from earlier 750 crore rupees. Their total outgo and the offer has increased by 300 crore rupees to 1,800 crores. What they have also given as a weighted average of the implied valuation of per share of Fortis Healthcare now stands at 172 rupees per share. Now, as part of their entire uh, deal, they, they intend to sell off SRL and have enough money along with rights issue to really buy out RHT. So that's what uh, Manipal Munjal have been uh, giving and they are an aggressive bidder. But IHH, the Malaysian company, has really upped the offer and given a price of 175 rupees per share which is the highest amongst the all four bidders but that is the amount only for 650 crore rupees of upfront payment while the rest of the 4000 crore rupees total offer really depends on due diligence so that needs to be really kept in mind so at the moment apple to apple comparison in terms of stock price uh, that will be highest by IHH while Manipal TPG still has five days to really uh, match the highest bidder so that's how it stacks up for all of us so let's see this race really intensifies and lots more to be seen in this saga but due diligence whether or not that will be allowed by the board will be extremely critical to watch out for okay this race intensifies sounding like a reality show now as to who will go ahead and get this deal but speaking of deals and acquisitions the race for flipkart too has intensified sources tell cnbc tv 18 that amazon has now made a formal offer to buy 60 percent stake in flipkart kritika saxena joins in with more details kritika well, Walmart is in the final stages of negotiation to look at acquiring Flipkart. Uh, we already know that Amazon has been in the fray, but what we understand now is that a formal offer has now finally been made. So far, uh, Flipkart investors were holding out to see what Amazon has to offer. So this is what we have in terms of the details. They have offered to buy out at least 60% stake in the company versus Walmart's offer, which we understand is above 80%. But Walmart had offered to retain the current structure of Flipkart. In this particular case, we understand that Amazon has offered to merge the entity entirely, merge Flipkart entirely into the India arm if the deal does go through. They have also asked for a non-compete uh, requirement of about one to two years by the founders, which is not there in the Walmart offer. As far as the financial parameters are concerned, we understand that the financial details are pretty much on par, but Amazon has offered a breakup fee and this had been reported earlier as well of about $2 billion, uh, which essentially entails that if the deal doesn't go through between the two players or for some reason the deal is terminated, there is a breakup of fee requirement. Now, where do things stand as far as Walmart is concerned? We understand that investors, including Tiger, Axel, as well as NASPA, prefer Walmart's offer at this point in time. Uh, uh, and uh, SoftBank is the only player which hasn't kind of made a decision. SoftBank does want to partially exit over here. We learned that Sachin Bansal was in US next week. Even the founders, for instance, are favoring Walmart at this point. Uh, Walmart global executives are likely to come in uh, very soon. Um, the conversations last week between the founders and Walmart were positive, and the negotiations are in the last lap. So it remains to be seen if Amazon does emerge the front runner. But yes, by the looks of it, Walmart still continues to be uh, the, the very clear front runner here. All right, that's one of the largest transactions in the mergers and acquisition space. Shifting focus to the earnings and the review of that. Well, Dabur, that's a stock which is up in trades today, looking uh, like it's almost 2% up and it's buzzing after the company, remember, posted a good set of results this quarter. We spoke to Sunil Duggal, the CEO of Dabur, on the growth and the margins outlook for the company going forward. Uh, gross margins to trend at current levels in the first half. The visibility in terms of inflation and all is pretty much there. So uh, we've got our, uh, our, our, our covers booked for uh, uh, the raw materials. So I think it will be pretty stable in the first half. And second half, again, it depends upon how much inflation will hit. We do believe that we have pricing power to neutralize inflation. So I don't see margins trending down uh, even in the second half. But uh, there not be much possibility of uh, improvement in margins. Remember that we are already sitting on historically high margins, so uh, growing on that is not going to be easy. This quarter was outstanding, 18% or 17% top line, 34% bottom line growth in the international business. 
Uh, this is, may not be easy to maintain because this is of a little bit lower base, but I still see uh, for the balance of the year strong double digit growth emanating out of the international business. All right, that was Dabar, but just keep an eye out on individual stocks. Just Dial is the one that should come up for you. It's just sudden knock on that uh, stock of close to around 10, 15 percent. In fact, from the high point, it's corrected about 14 percent. But remember, it was in the red. So just in the last few seconds, we've seen a cut of almost 11 percent. We'll try to get by some. It's just down about 12 percent. We'll keep an eye out on these stocks. But one of India's largest engineering and infrastructure company, l &T, exiting some of its non-core businesses. The company will sell its electric and automation business to Germany. Schneider Electric for 14,000 crore rupees. We spoke with the management of LT on the approvals required for this deal. Listen in. First, come to this announcement for this transaction. And second, how critical is the CCI approval at this point? Are you worried about certain businesses which uh, really breach the threshold of CCI norms? In my view, when you do such a transaction of, a, of an existing business which has been there for a long time, it's like a son or daughter coming of age and moving out. It's not an easy thing to do. As, and as I said, we had international bidders only who could look at this kind of transaction. So a combination of this does take a fair amount of time in negotiations and in agreeing to certain things and they agreeing to certain things. So this process takes us time and that's what it has taken. We signed the agreement today afternoon. And here we are announcing it. So as I see it, the moment we have signed it, we announced it. Now I cannot keep giving details of every negotiation and every no, argument no that take place. Issue in uh, in uh, getting any approvals is uh, what I'm asking. So coming to that, there are certain regulatory as well as competitive commission approvals that we need to get. Now as I explained, the there are a few products which has certain implications on CCI. But one cannot look it at certain products alone because nobody buys a product. When, you, when you're building a factory, when you're building an industrial complex, when you're building a building or when you're building some automation solutions, you buy the entire range of products. You cannot have mismatch of products in that. Mm. And therefore, one has to view it holistically. And when you view it holistically, I think this is, this is, a, this is a transaction which needs to go through. And that's the way we, 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 we will propose it. And that's the way we'll take it forward. All right, CCI approval will be very, very crucial for this particular transaction. It's a large one, 14,000 crore rupees. Let's also hear out the buyer of uh, the uh, electrical and automation business of LNT, which is Schneider, the global company. And we spoke to Anil Chaudhary, who's the MD and the zone president at Schneider and heads the electric business. It makes strategic importance uh, for Schneider to buy out LNT business. Take a look. This transaction is also very important from Schneider Kick point of view, which brings strong global technology platform, digital offers, and global presence, together with electrical and automation's wide domestic reach, coupled with end-to-end R&D and manufacturing capabilities specific to Indian market. India will also become the third largest country in terms of revenue for Schneider Electric at par with France. MSEC is our strategic partner for the team. They are also equally committed for the new economies and especially with respect to India as a country. And uh, they are, uh, you know, uh, have been investing here. And with this deal, they are very strongly uh, reinforcing their commitment for India, like Shana Electric. All right, that was uh, Schneider Electric. But let's talk about Apple's earnings. In fact, speaking during the Q2 earning call, earnings call, Apple CEO Tim Cook said that they had record sales in the first half in India. He also said that India being the third largest smartphone market in the world, the market is far from saturated and there are wide growth prospects in India. Rukmini Rao joins us with more details. So Rukmini, Apple seems to be very bullish on India, right? Absolutely, Apple seems... Uh very bullish on India market, uh, like you pointed out, speaking uh, uh, over the Q2 earnings with analyst uh, Apple CEO Tim Cook uh, said that uh, Apple has seen a record first half sales uh, of its products in India market. Uh, so that is really uh, the reason why Apple is putting a lot of energy and uh, the entire objective of the company is uh, over a period of time to be able to be in the market through differentiated initiatives, uh, right from retail to everything else. Tim also conceded to the fact that India is, of course, uh, the third largest smartphone market and uh, the market is uh, far from saturated. And given the fact that uh, 
carriers are investing on uh, LTE technology big time. Or Apple is already in talks with uh, the carriers to ensure uh, seamless service. And uh, in coming days, of course, Apple will be focused uh, towards uh, building the India base going ahead. Back to you. All right, Rukmini, thanks so much for getting us all those details from the stable of Apple. One stock in focus, Idea Cellular, that one is down in trade and it's trading at the lowest point of the day, down over 3% as we speak. So take a look at uh, that particular counter coming in from the telecom space. Idea Cellular, lowest point of the day and what a slide it has seen. With that, we'll quickly shift uh, focus uh, to Battleground Karnatakas and uh, Midcap Index has slowed down further as we speak, reaching towards a half percent loss in the trading session at this point. Vedanta Limited, keep an eye on that particular counter, also softened substantially in the last few minutes of trade, down over 4% as we speak. But remember, it's um, an election year that we are talking about, so shifting focus to battleground Karnataka, even as the Prime Minister really kicks off his Karnataka campaign in uh, Chamarajanagar. Uh, well, the Congress firmly believes that Modi's rally will not make a dent and Rukmini Rao caught up with G. Parmeshwar, the president of Karnataka Press, uh, Pradesh uh, Congress Committee, to find out if the Modi's rallies are of any consequence in the upcoming elections. Take a look. My question to BJP leadership is, what is Modi to offer to Karnataka? What have you done to Karnataka? I mean, that's what is important, you know. And what is Adityanath uh, uh, can do to Karnataka? I mean, they may be leaders of the Bharati Janata Party, but what is it that they are going to offer? Mm. That is the big question. Mm. And uh, Modi coming here, any, you know, let him come any number of times. Mm. I, mean, I, I don't think he will make a dent because he has not, he has not uh, done anything in the last four years significantly uh, to Karnataka other than, other than the plan outlay. Mm. If there is a special of package for Karnataka, let us say, uh, instead of uh, uh, the plan outlay, mm. in addition to plan outlay, mm. if he has given, let's say, 5,000 five, 5, crores or 50,000 crores, mm. something like that, you know, what he did uh, for Uttar Pradesh. You know, he gave a special package for Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. Worst case scenario, if uh, Congress is unable to get a full majority, as you believe you would be, uh, what is the road ahead? Are you going to be talking to any of uh, the other regional parties here, especially JDS? Have you worked out a plan B? No. We are so confident that we'll come back to power on our own. There are reasons for that. Mm. You know, I'm not just saying that, mm. okay, we are just coming back to power. Uh, last time, the same scenario was mm. there. Everybody was talking, including the media. Mm. They're saying it is going to be a hung assembly mm. and, uh, you know, who is going to join whom. This permutation combination was working out. But uh, this time, again, I'm fully confident. We have worked out the numbers. We are going to make it. There's no question of alliance at all. That, that I pushed it to the side. Sure. Numbers are going to be greater than what you got last time? Definitely. Okay. All right, that's Battleground Karnataka, but let's move on. Soon we understand that Jawans and their families could use e-wallets to make payments at the defense canteens, the army defense canteens, that is. We learned from sources that the canteen stores department, which makes up about 5 to 7% of the FMCG industry sales, is in talks with marquee payment gateway firms to accept payment through their platforms. Priya? Well, absolutely. In fact, uh, as the canteen store department gets more automation and digitization into the whole system, we understand that there is some convenience as far as payment gateways are also concerned. Now, what we do understand is that Paytm, Airtel Money as well as MobiQuick have approached uh, the CSD, that's the canteen stores department, to enable payments via their platforms. Now, do remember that as of now, payments at these defense canteens are only accepted through cash, credit or debit cards as well as the Beam UPI that they recently introduced. So this perhaps could be a turning point for several payment companies. Now, what the wallets are offering at this point is zero commission structures, uh, free transactions at this point in time. And also, they're looking at perhaps, uh, you know, introducing a transaction charge uh, later at some point uh, if uh, needed. Of course, the canteen stores department will need to seek a nod from the defense ministry before allowing uh, any payments through other financial instruments. So, this is a space that we'll have to keep an eye out for. In fact, we did reach out to all the companies involved. The canteen stores department said that it is 
is an evolving scenario and they will wait for government policy surrounding the acceptance of private portals. Uh, the other companies, Paytm, Mobiquick, as well as Airtel Money, did not respond to our query.